Becoming your strongest financial self? Good plan. Northwestern Mutual's Guide to Good Financial Planning can help you balance spending and saving, set goals, and start creating the life you want to be living. Get it today at northwesternmutual.com slash good plan. The Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Hi, I'm Brian, and I love Hallmark Christmas movies. <laughs> hey, I'm Panda, and I like Hallmark Christmas movies. <laughs> I'm Dan, and I despise Hallmark Christmas movies. What? (laughs) And And this this is the the Deck the Hallmark Podcast. Podcast. I have some problems. (laughs) Oh, boy. The problem is this. You guys came out to an event to cheer on the despisal. That's right. Yeah, of yeah. Christmas. Look, it, there actually is a lot of spirit in despising. Apparently. Apparently. Anyway, yeah, yeah. I'm happy I to have you I thought for guys. sure that I was going to get the biggest. Now, what you don't know is, is that eighty of these people are just my family. Yeah. Like, that's the thing you don't know. <laughs> and is. your family is as yeah. loud as that's you right. are. And my that's mom true. had to cheer for me despising something, which is killing her inside. <laughs> yeah. 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 So guys, uh, we are the Deck the Hallmark podcast. We're super happy. We, we are. This is going to be our thirty. First, first movie that. of the year. Wow. 31st. Mm. Seven after this one. Seven after Home this. stretch. Oh. I can and let's say it. add more, and they will. Let's just be honest. Yeah, there's there's going to be a 39th. I can, the last one is about a midnight kiss at New Year's Eve. That's not even Christmas. No, it's not. I, I feel just, cheated. Can oh we take that one off? Can we do that? Can we take it off? It's a no-go? No. Okay. Never mind. Well, I just I well, feel it was like worth a try. <laughs> I can taste the freedom. Like I can taste uh-huh. the sleep in uh-huh. January. It's right there. No, Dan, for me. what are you going to do, buddy? I'm going to sleep. Pan, I just told him the that. whole I month. Well, I just the whole. Yeah. You can't sleep forever. Going gonna, into hibernation. I still have to work, believe it or not. But uh, it's going to be. Not, I'm going to watch anything other than Hallmark movies. That's what I'm going to do. Diagnosis: Murder. I'm in. Murder. She wrote. I'm in. CSI. I'm in. CSI Miami with Horatio Kane. Ow. I'm in. Okay. <laughs> I'm in. Just not Hallmark. When are we getting a CSI Greenville? Oh, it's coming. It's coming. (laughs) It's going to be great. Who's going to be in it? Ooh, Treat Williams. Macaulay Culkin is out and about. (laughs) Dude, Treat Williams and Macaulay are going to be the two. They're going to be the two guys. Treat is the old guy, the old grizzled veteran who's lost touch with reality. And Macaulay Culkin... Macaulay just walks around and goes, ah! Yeah. It's great. It's great. I would watch that. We're here to talk about Small Town Christmas. Yeah, of course. we're really excited about. uh, Look, we are almost... Now, you guys in the crowd, I know are really excited about this. We are almost to 1,000 by the 31st. Oh! We we are like at 980-some reviews. We're almost... I think we're going to make it. Johnny iTunes, are you there? Hello. Where you at? Hey, grab a slice with me. I gave you all your reviews back, so shut the front door. All right. (laughs) Thank you, Johnny. Thank you. (laughs) Merry Christmas. Yeah. That's a weird right. bit. <laughs> I like it, though. Uh, so if you could leave us a review Please, on the, on the iTunes. Please, review us. Even um, a one star. Those are fun for us. Yeah. Those are fun. They really are. What was the one? Uh, they, they, don't, they think that we say, I will say they, this. A bunch. Well, I will say this about that review. I'll say this. <laughs> if I say nothing else, I'll say, let me say this one. Let thing. me say this. I will say this. I've become it. super self-conscious about talking every you time. Have, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're a little neurotic in that no, way. I now am a little like, bit. I'm going to say nothing. I'm just going to be That's what I'm going to do. Okay. And before we dive into the movie, we do got to talk about one. One of our partners, we've partnered with two great uh, nonprofits all season long. We'd love to talk about communities and schools mm, as three so guys who uh, love uh, investing in the next generation. This one's super important to us. So, Dan, tell everybody about it. Uh, it was my pleasure. Can you believe they let this guy teach, first of all? Like, they did that for a short period of time. I taught. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's loose. Um, <laughs> So uh, you, most of you guys know I'm a principal, and uh, close, near and dear to uh, an educator's heart is seeing an individual succeed and, and being a part of that. Like, one of the reasons I get to go to my job every day and feel just great about it is because I know that I've played a very small part in seeing someone's journey take place. And so when they walk across that stage and get a, a diploma, it is the beginning of their story, and it's the end of my story with them, but I know that I have a small part in what they do. Communities in Schools is a, is a nonprofit across the country that basically specializes in that field. Feeling. They specialize in the idea that there are 20% of our kids who don't have that opportunity to graduate high school for whatever reason, and they are giving them that opportunity through resources, used through schools, uh, all, over the, all over the country. And so uh, if you know what that's like, if you know that feeling of graduating high school and want to help contribute, uh, we have been blown away by already by your willingness to give. And so continue to do so. Go to deckthehallmark.com slash joy, deckthehallmark.com slash joy, and you can, that wasn't even close to a harmony. You know what? Like, I, I know I'm talking, I'm so but it wasn't sorry. even. Uh, Try it one 
one more time. It's okay, buddy. Okay. Jackhelmer.com slash joy. joy. Yeah, and you can give and give generously. <laughs> Very nicely done. Uh, thanks so much in advance for partnering with us as we partner with them. Thanks so much, guys. It is time. Let's do this. To talk about small town Christmas. Oh, baby. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> it originally aired on December 16, 2018. And I went a little something like this. The movie kicks off with Nell Phillips, an author reading a chapter of her book, Small Town Christmas. Yeah. Uh, the book is uh, about growing up in a small town called Springdale, but she didn't actually grow up in that town. She heard about it from someone that she used to work with. His name is Emmett, and Emmett is awesome. Uh, he owns a bookstore in Springdale and gets a, a phone call about having Nell come and do a book signing there. So we enter into Springfield's smack dab in the middle of Kringle Fest. Kringles! Kringles! <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> the time of the year when Springdale really comes into season. But attendance to this year's Kringle Fest, Kringles! Kringles! It's super low. And so they're like, what are we going to do? So Nell isn't super excited about coming into town because her and Emmett have a past. They worked together in the big bad city of New York. And on the uh, one evening they were supposed to go out, but he doesn't show up. I know. Turns out Emmett quit his job and left town with no explanation. So she's pretty nervous about seeing him again. So she lands in Springdale and gets a rental car and ends up giving a guy named Brad a lift to Springdale because there's no more rentals in the inn. Uh, Brad is a financial guy. Thank you. Brad is a financial guy who's planning to help get Springdale on the map. They pull into the hotel and Emmett's walking down and, and he sees her and, and, and he's like, oh no, Brad and Nell are a thing. Um, and so she kind of like goes along with it. No one knows why. The next morning, uh, Emmett gives Nell a tour around town and she's being pretty cold towards him. And even at one point, instead of calling him a friend, she calls him an acquaintance. Ooh. So Emmett is talking to a co-worker, and we find out that he actually mailed Nell a letter to the office where they used to work, but he never heard back from her. Uh, Nell then bumps into a little girl named Marnie, and, and she thinks that Marnie and Emmett, uh, like, it's, 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 it's his daughter. Yeah, yeah. But spoiler alert, it's not. Ooh. It's his niece. Uh, his sister actually passed away, and he, that's the reason he left New York. He left New York to come and, and become uh, the guardian of Marnie. So he's really shocked that, that she didn't know that, but they just kind of let it go. Um, here's the thing. The town almost riots after they find out that Brad and his big city money are going to change Kringle Fest. Kringles! Kringles! <laughs> Meg's dear, but Emmett steps in and is like, whoa, 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 it's Christmas. The next day, Emmett and Nell are hanging out and they go to cut down a Christmas tree and Emmett tells her that he's still writing and wants to and ask if she will read his stuff. Um, and so uh, uh, Emmett then gets an offer from Brad to buy the store and he's like, it's not for sale and it's actually not even mine. It's technically Marnie's, but he agrees to look at it anyways. And Brad tries to get Nell to encourage him to sell because Brad be dirty. Uh, Emmett walks Nell home and the feeling are clearly back and you know that they want to kiss. It's not really an almost kiss. It's more like with the eyes. Oh, lots of eyes. But they end up walking away from each other. The morning comes for Nell to leave but it turns out that her manager who she was going to spend Christmas with gets sick and so she decides to stay in Springdale. She almost she tells off Brad and it's like, Brad, you be dirty. Um, <laughs> Nell and Emmett get into, uh, they're, they're talking about things and, um, and, and, and he's like, I can't take the offer and she's like, you shouldn't take the offer because that's part of what makes this town so so great, but everybody else is willing to take the offer. But here's the thing about Brad. It's an all or nothing thing for Brad. Brad says either all of you take it or none of you are getting it. And so everybody's like, I don't know what to do. And, and, and Emmett's like, I think I'm going to take it. And, and, and then all of a sudden he's like, no, I'm not going to take it. Yay for small towns. <laughs> the next day, uh, she, she walks out, she storms out because she felt like he wasn't listening to her and, and he's like, uh, you're right, I'm gonna go tell her and so, and so he runs after her and, and they're like, I love you and they kiss and everything's happy and the Christmas snowfall falls and that, my friend, was a small town Christmas. Woo! Mm, I, mm. I will say, I will say this. Yeah. Uh, the title should have been just Brad Be Dirty. Brad, Brad, be, Brad, Brad, Brad be, be dirty, dirty. y'all. He be dirty. He be dirty. dirty. Brad. Uh, we have four segments on this show. Could his name be B, B Rad? Maybe B Rad. B Rad. Be, be dirty. I like it. Ooh, a band name. B Rad. Be dirty. Just go I on saw tour. Them. Yeah, yeah. 
Go ahead. Four <laughs> segments. We have four segments on this show. The first one is a, is a standard one. It's hot take. Hot we take? talk about what we think about the movie, and I always start with one guy, one guy only, and his name is Panda. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Uh, hey. Oh. You- Oh, hey guys! Uh, <laughs> they weren't willing to commit. No, they were. There was like, can we cheer for that? Nah, I don't know. You know, the problem is they set a precedent because if they yep. cheer every time, it's just going to no, get no, old. No, I get it. No, I hear save it. The guys. precedent was set. Saying. The precedent was set when they all cheered for you. Yeah, no, that's yeah, true. no I hear. I'm sorry. Ridiculous I hear what you're people. Saying. So here's the deal. Here's my hot take on this film. As long as that summary was, I still feel like there wasn't a lot that happened in this movie. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, it, I still like it though, and here's why: because there's a little bit of scandal, guys. Ooh, oh, a little bit of scandal. scandal. There's a, this love triangle was intense. There's a, a Hallmark tri- film. Tell me, there's a love a... triangle in like every Hallmark. Yeah. Not like not this like this okay. one. Okay. Not, like not this. with V Rad. Uh, <laughs> so overall, hey, listen, Chris was great in this. Chris Palaha, he was phenomenal in this. He does a great George Bailey impression. Sure, 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 sure. sure. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but I will also say that the the whole entire premise of this movie is built around the idea that a letter got lost and then they fell off contact. I feel like a text message could have solved a lot of problems. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I don't know if you guys have heard of it. There is a thing called the internet. It that's is right. new to Hallmark Land, yeah. so they're still getting well, caught Well, even up. in Wisconsin, text messages work. I mean, that's not even a 4G feature. Like, that's just a normal feature. <laughs> that's shocking. Yeah, believe it or not. No. That's it. It's okay. You liked it, is what you said. I liked it. Okay. 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 I loved this movie. <laughs> yeah. Not only did I love this movie, not only did I... Uh, this is my favorite movie of the year. Wow. Yes. Oh. yes. Bold. Is it because I have a man crush on Chris yes. Malaha? Yes, it yes. is. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. No, I thought this movie was so much fun. I did like the voice. Like, he did a voice. No one does a voice in Hallmark movies. He did a voice. It was awesome. Uh, it, it kept moving for me. I liked them. It was good chemistry and the whole thing and the whatnots. And I just really loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I will say that I, I think uh, Palaha does, it's tough because we love Chris Palaha. Like even I love Chris Palaha. Mm-hmm. And so that makes it tough uh, because he does do a good job in these movies. Having said that, this movie is really, really bad. Uh, I, I really don't <laughs> want to tell you. Um, first of all, and I, I, I want to make sure I'm clear on this. We try to Kringle. Uh, uh, Kringle! Uh, Kringle! <laughs> you cannot do that right now because <laughs> I have to say that word no less than 10 times in this. <laughs> right. There's, There's nothing do. you can do. So There's do nothing not. you can do. It's the rules. Don't do it. I can't it's... see a single face out there, but look at my eyes. Don't it's do it. <laughs> okay? So we tried one of those pastries on Wednesday. <laughs> uh, pastries! <laughs> and, uh, and uh, we tried one straight from Wisconsin, Racine, Wisconsin, O and H uh, Kringle Place. Yeah, and, and yeah. <laughs> I didn't see it coming. The guy, <laughs> Jonathan Parker, who is in his nice tweed suit, is going to kill us because we're going to go an hour and a half. I'm just sorry right now. Uh, so uh, here's the deal: um, the Kringle was delicious, <laughs> and it was so good that uh, Chris told us that this movie was about Kringle Fest. And <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and here's the thing. They're in Wisconsin where Kringle's... The, it's this guy. It's this guy. It's your dad. That's my dad. That's the dad. That's my dad. It's your father. Unbelievable. It all makes sense now. Brandon's dad. Uh, I just looked over and saw a silhouette and he goes, I'm his dad. Uh, so, so anyway... I, one thing I'm excited about now that I've tried one and they're delicious and I'm completely on What'd board, you try? a Kringle, <laughs> uh, is that I'm like, this movie's about Kringle Fest. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of them in the movie. It's going to be, they're going to be baking them. How many Kringles <laughs> appear in this movie? None. Not a single one. The a, movie, a, a zero the size of an airplane the, tire. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, there, were more cr- there were more Kringles in your house on Wednesday, on Wednesday night than there were in this entire movie. And I don't, for the life of me, call it Snowflake Fest or Christmas Fest. You called it the one thing you didn't have in the yeah. movie, and that was not good. Also... Uh, Christopher Palaha is doing a George Bailey impression. And, and if you don't know who that is, that is the protagonist from It's a Wonderful Life. It's Jimmy Stewart. Give yeah. it to me, Panda. Maury. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah. Man, and I, I did say, like, his, his niece is Marnie, and I thought for sure he was going to go, Marnie, Marnie. Uh, you never, you never do a George Bailey, like, ever do a George Bailey impression. He still pulled it off to a certain degree. I will say that the couple things I like. One, um, the, they do all of the Hallmark meet cute stuff 
with B Rad, dirty B Rad, right? Mm-hmm. They don't do it with with Emmett. They like all the stuff that's normal, coffee spill, share a car, meet each other. They do it with the villain. And I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, not for me, as you can imagine. Um, mm. And just middling. Middling is a Hallmark film. Yeah. Not not a huge mm. thing. Well, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> we have another segment we on do. this show. <laughs> it's called All the Feels. All the Feels. This is a part of the show where we talk about what this movie gave us, those Christmas feels. Mm. Panda, what you got, bud? Listen, guys, there's a scene <laughs> in this movie that shouldn't work, but it did. And it's when they're decorating the Christmas tree. They're just throwing tinsel up there. It's really haphazard, maybe a little scary, but I loved it. <laughs> yeah, that's when the 10-year-old says she has a system for throwing tinsel. Yes, that's and, the same and one. And her system is just run about in a fancy and throw it in the air. <laughs> I that thought one. it was beautiful. Okay, good. I, it Glad got me right oh, no, here, Dan. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, my All the Feels happens. Um, there is a, a very, very tiny ice rink. Um, and in that <laughs> ice rink at one point, Marnie and, uh, and uh, what's her name? Nell, Nell are skating around and they're talking. And Nell kind of gives her like some words of advice. I don't know. It worked for me. It was very sweet. <laughs> what was oh. weird about that scene to me is, is that Nell like, should never be taking a shot. Ch- they just... like. I know Emmett knows her, but it's like, hey, I haven't met you in 10 years. You want to take my daughter ice skating by yourself? You want to go for it? Go on out there. Like, we'll, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll, we'll take it from here. And so I just was put off by that scene in general. Dan, um, there is not a time, uh, amount of time that could pass that would stop me from letting you take my children ice skating. Thank you. Aww. Thank you. Aww. So you're saying if we're apart like a decade or two, yeah. I show up. I'm 50 or 60. <laughs> I'm taking I'm, the kids' ice I'm skating. grizzled. Like, yes. I've lost everything. Yes. I'm like a homeless dude. Yes. I got no fingertips on, yes. the, on the gloves. <laughs> well, you, uh, might be in a Hallmark movie. That's right. Uh, and I'm just, you're just going to, just, here you go, kiddos. Absolutely. Because at that point, they're going to be like 30. So yes. <laughs> that would be easy to do, yeah. Uh, they probably have the upper hand. <laughs> um, uh, so I, I really tried. Like, there's, I mean, Santa gave me some feels. I'm a little worried. I feel worried that I'm not on the nice list. Uh, my parents were big into Santa growing up, so uh, they. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I will say that the stuff with the girl, like the girl Marnie, wasn't terrible. Like there were some scenes with her that I thought were really good. I mean, not when they're teaching math; that was inexplicably bad. But there were some times <laughs> when I felt as though the scenes with the girl and the fact that this guy is a valiant dude who should have sent a text message, but yeah. he was a valiant dude who comes home to take care of his niece and and run the small town. Uh, God bless him. I, I thought that there were some good scenes to be had in there, yeah. for Thanks. sure. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah. Uh, it is time for the wait what, but before we get to the wait what, we do have another partner that yeah. we're really excited to talk about, the American Leprosy Missions. You've heard about them all season long. We love them. If you were here tonight and paid for a ticket, you made a massive contribution to ending yeah. leprosy worldwide. So I want to thank you personally from the bottom of our hearts. Yeah, thank you, guys. Uh, by supporting us, you're supporting them. And so that is something that we have a little bit of a voice right now, and to use that voice to help others is something that's near and dear to all of our hearts. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Um, awesome. It's time for the Wait What segment mm, of the show where we talk about it. what in this movie made us pause and go, wait, What? what? There are always quite a few things. And so I'm going to kick us off tonight, if you guys don't Do mind. Do it. Um, you know, you know uh, B-Rad, Be Dirty? Oh, B-Rad. Mm. You know Tell about, about him? him. Well, he takes it on the chin. In the- <laughs> oh. there, there's a part, it's pretty early on, where he goes to the mayor's office and he is telling the mayor about all the things that he wants to do. <laughs> and he says, I have some plans. Mayor Deacons, Mayor by the Deacons. Way. Yeah. yeah. Can I show you my plans? And the mayor's like, yeah. And he hands him his iPad. And do you want to know what's on his screen? <laughs> There's a picture. It's there it just, is. It's just his home screen. The home screen. <laughs> there it is. That's it. It's just the home screen. Just the home screen. My plan to save the city is the new <laughs> Apple iOS. <laughs> You're going to want to update your phone. <laughs> Immediamente. Do it right now. Just put something on it, guys. Anything. Uh, just anything. anything. Bars, it could be charts. a smiley face. I don't know. Just, yeah. <laughs> just anything. Uh, and, then, and then there's another scene. It's uh, the Christmas tree lighting. And they invite Nell to come up and to do a reading from her book, which is really great. But the portion <laughs> that she reads just a at, a, at a very cheerful yeah. evening... It's just the weirdest thing. It really is. It's about lost love. The one that, that got away. The one mm. that got away. It would be like if we were like, hey guys, for our next segment, we're going to have Sinead O'Connor come up and do a Gulf War protest song. <laughs> <laughs> She's just going to sing it. We're all going to stand in silence, and then we're going to get back to what we do. That's basically what it would be it's like. It's like you coming here and me just going, I was once in love. <laughs> 
<laughs> Merry Christmas. It was, it was, I, uh, I, it was a weird... Reading, I was like, this is going to come back around to like a Christmas tree, yeah. right? No, no. Uh-uh. 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 It's just about loving, losing, and maybe triumph. Just don't know why yeah. she picked it. That's all yeah. I got. Uh, Panda, mm. what you got, bud? Listen, there's a great <laughs> scene. <laughs> I might have over-exaggerated when I said great. There's a scene in this movie. Uh, and what happens is Chris gets into the car. And by Chris, I mean Emmett. Emmett gets into the car, and he buckles up. I think we got, we got, a, we got a picture. We have a picture. You got a pic? Right? We have Good. a pic right here. Take it to the tape. So take a look at that background. He just gets into the car. He buckles up. Yeah. And they're getting ready to go. Except that they're not. Next clip. Very next scene, they actually hop out of the car and, and cut down the, the Christmas tree. Yeah. Emmett, what are you doing, man? Dude. In the car, out of the car, what are we doing? I don't know. I will <laughs> say that snow was extra digitized. <laughs> like, like, it was like industrial light magic was in, like, did they film it in New Zealand? Did Peter Jackson, like, is there a Hobbit coming Wait, out of the woods vid- there? Video of it? Is there a video of it real quick? Is there a video? Do we have a digital snow video? Do we have that? I honestly don't, I don't know. know. I know I this know sounds like a bit. Not. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. come on. That's it. There it is. Wow, we really did it, it there. <laughs> the pr- production value is top notch. <laughs> nice work, buddy. Is there a video? Uh, yeah. uh, like there's somebody in our ear right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. So, we have it? Mm. Wow. <laughs> we did. Oh, I don't, I don't man. Think that. Okay. This, the second one is uh, near the end, and we got to bring up Brad again. Uh, Brad has really just... <laughs> <laughs> this really is really work. I think I know hard. where you're going, and this is great. We really don't trade notes beforehand, but I can no. tell you where he's going. Right now. He has decorated this entire oh, it looks banquet, so good. and it looks nice, looks guys. So good, it's beautiful. It's like this. It's beautiful. It, it oh, is beautiful. ridiculously it's really nice. Really nice. Really top notch. And somebody comes up to him. And is like, Brad, you idiot. It looks <laughs> terrible. And it ruined Christmas for everyone. This, Look at this. This is. It's not. It's not really, ugly. You really crap the bed, Brad. <laughs> How what were you thinking, you? Brad? This is so nice. I felt bad. It's the one time in the movie I felt bad for Brad. Yeah. I was like, sorry, Brad. No, no, like, you did your best and it's terrible. Nice this- Christmases aren't our tradition. Yeah. <laughs> what are you thinking? We're Kringle Fest. With, Kringle. Uh, with no Kringles. Kringle. There it is. Uh, and I will say this. Brad takes it on the chin and most of it is deserved. But I like, like... Stay with me here. This is, I'm just going to read this sentence off the page so I make sure I don't screw it up. This is a successful venture capitalist who thinks bringing high-end tourists to a small town in Wisconsin in the dead of winter is a no-brainer. He thinks that is going to sell like hotcakes, right? Yeah. Like, you know what we do? We go to the coldest place in the United States. We get people with a lot of money. Uh-huh. We put them up in a small town, right. and it's cold, there's going to be wine, though. There's going to be wine. <laughs> They're going to love it. Uh, and, and, he, and then he, at one point he goes, I underestimated the, just the sheer number of tourists we'll have here next year. How? Like, you've not done this yet. Like, how have you underestimated anything? Like, you can't underestimate until you estimate, and you can't estimate until you do your job. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, so, um, the tree lighting ceremony in general is a weird... Like, the mayor gets up and he wants to have a business meeting. Yeah. Which I thought was fun. It's like, we're here to light the big tree, to push the button, to sing carols, and the mayor's like, but first, we got a few things on the agenda. Like... Can, like, <laughs> how are they running the town here? Yeah. Like, can you, my dad's a pastor. Can you imagine, like, if they did, like, a Christmas party and, like, all the kids were there and my dad was like, first, we got to talk about the planning committee and the steering committee <laughs> and we got to vote on this and that. And we got, it's, re- and like, it's not just that. It's like your dad saying, you know what? We're scrapping the children's play next year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. At the children's yeah, play. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Scrapping Tim. the whole thing. It's over. There is a guy that we, you don't mention named Steve. And Steve is the husband of of the girl who is pregnant and works in the bookstore for Emmett, right? You can see why I didn't mention That's right. No, no. Yeah. It's, it's a lot to say. Important. It's a lot to say. So they're in the crowd. They're in the crowd, and Mayor Deacons is like, before we light this tree, we got some things we got to talk about and discuss. And everybody in the town is like, yeah, I'm in. I'm in for this business meeting at the Christmas tree lighting. And, and Steve does like a high school eye roll, this guy, can you believe it bit. Like he's like... Right, <laughs> you know, and I was just like, "Is what's the like? What's the deal there? I don't understand what his back and forth is with the mayor. Does he have some sort of vendetta against the mayor?" And last but not least, Amanda is at book club, and they ask her about her novel, which the protagonist in her novel is a lot like she is. Uh, no, Amanda is the protagonist in the novel. Nell is the real life person, yes. and they say, "Hey, like, were you inspired by by Amanda in the in the in the book?" And she says this line. She says. I don't know if Amanda was inspired by me or I was inspired by her. No, 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 no. That's not how that works. This is is not a chicken or the egg. Which came first? You were alive. 
You had a pen and paper. You wrote Amanda into existence. She cannot be the one that inspired. Amanda wasn't, this is absurd. Like we're in some sort of dreamland where the character exists before the person who wrote it. Yeah. Like what if Charles Dickens was like Pip? Pip was my inspiration. Like, Pip was alive. He wrote Great Expectations, and he's like, Charles, this is for you. Doesn't make any sense. Those are my weight ones. You wouldn't get it. <laughs> you wouldn't get it. Oh, my goodness. It's time for the last, uh, the last segment of the show. What the Hallmark, I what believe. What the Hallmark. Mm. Now, here's the thing about what the Hallmark. It's, it's the part of the show where we wonder what was or what could have been. We try to answer any I questions. I have questions I want answered. Yes, yeah, I, do. I do too. For sure. And if only there was a way that we could have them answered. Boy, that would be um, nice. That would be super. What you want to you give it a shot? You don't you think, just, you don't what think if we will. called someone? You want to give it a shot to see if it works? Let's just give it a Let's give it a Ooh. Wow, it's there. Cow. <laughs> it's hot in the monitor. Hi. Hi. This is Christopher Palaha, and I act in Hallmark movies. Wow. Chris, thanks so much for joining us, man. Like live in California. Can you believe it? Gentlemen, no, my pleasure. My absolute pleasure. And I look, I know we want to talk a little bit before we get going, but like your last movie was Pearl in Paradise, which you filmed in Fiji. Uh, and in that movie, you play a, an act, uh, an author who's not written anything in a long time, uh, and like goes to find some inspiration. Well, in this new movie, uh, you play an author that hasn't written anything in a long time, and it was a, it was a real departure. It was a real departure for you. And I just, I want to know how you pulled it off, buddy. You know, what, you know, in Hollywood, they have this thing typecast again. <laughs> Chris, Merry Christmas, buddy. Yeah. Merry Christmas. I want to ask, how's the, I want to see if I can hear the audience. How's the audience doing tonight? Can I hear that? <laughs> oh, that's great. It's a hot All right, who's from, who's from Woodruff? Let me hear that. <laughs> Cricket. One guy. How about Greenville? Who's from Greenville? Oh, we got everybody. How about Charlotte? Anybody from Charlotte? Oh, yeah. Come on, people. There we go. How about Georgia? Anybody from Georgia? <laughs> How about Florida? Anybody from Florida? Yeah. <laughs> it's the That's my dad. Guy. He's right. pumped. I love being on your show. Let's go. I'm t- I, I won't. I won't. I won't. I won't sidetrack anymore. I'm here. I'm just. I'm happy for your geography. I just wanted, that was you, impressive. Just wanted, wanted you to wow. keep going. What a um, we are here to talk about small town Christmas. And before we dive into the the, the what the homework, Chris, tell everybody a, about the the making of this movie. You make it last week. What what was what's the, <laughs> what's, what's the story this time? Um, we did. We actually shot it in one day. Uh, it aired on the 16th. We shot it on the 13th yeah, of right. December. They were able to do post and everything on the 14th. They got some advertising in on the 15th, and we aired on the 16th. Um, it, it truly is a miracle of Christmas. <laughs> hey, man, when you, were, when you got the script and you saw the script, and you, how many pages did you turn in before you went, Mal, this, this is George Bailey. I've got to do a George Bailey impression. Well, here, I want to tell you guys a really quick story. So there was a, there was a rewrite done, and Mary Beth Sprouse, who's the executive at Hallmark, was actually surprised when I took the job because she was like, I didn't think you were going to take it. And I said, why? And she's like, it was just, there was, so Preston Vanderslice, the, the good-looking blonde guy who was supposed to be the foil in the competition for my character, had in the original script a mother uh, he had like this mustache that he would literally twist. They lived on the hill. It was like what? it was like this amazing like villainy that just they were dripping with villainy. And but I, yeah, I loved it, and I thought, well, you know what, we could we could roll with it. Also knowing that that these movies. Um, it's kind of like it's kind of like gingerbread house competitions. I find, <laughs> and you're gonna get a director a writer and, and a bunch of actors and you're going to give them a script and they're going to build a movie for you in the same way that all of you guys could go and build your own little gingerbread houses. And some of you are going to do amazing jobs and you're going to make really beautiful, concrete, you know, awesome things to look at. And some of them are going to be a little messy. And I think that's kind of what happens with these. It's like so many movies, so many people throwing in their, their, their two cents. So all that to say, we got the script um, when Ashley and I jumped on board, and then our director, McLean Nelson, jumped on board, and Mary Beth, who was so amazing to work with and willing to, like, they just 
they, we made a lot of changes and we made it tight and we made it fun, I think. And the George Bailey of it all kind of came in on page six or seven for me. Like as soon as I met him, the way that he moved down the street was like, well, hello, Santa. I, well, I told you I'd donate. So, wow. um, Nailed so that comes in pretty early. Love, love it. it. Chris, let me ask you, what's your favorite scene in the entire movie? And what happened to our mics? I can hear you. Perfect. Can you hear me? Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, my, my favorite scene in the entire movie. What is your favorite scene in the entire oh movie? Oh, my god! Oh, come on, Chris. Boo. Marnie. 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 <laughs> I'm well, trying hold to hold on now. Hold on now. Wait a minute, Dan. Uh, <laughs> I, think my favorite, I think my favorite scene in the whole movie, selfishly, is when you meet uh, Emmett for the first time. He comes around the corner. He gives Santa some money. He catches a star, and I named the woman Esther, and they left it in the movie, and that's my mother's name. Wow. So I got, that's to, I got awesome. to say my mom's name in a movie, which is a treat. And then I did a little dance around Steve, who I love. This guy, Ryan McDonald, who's like classic. Told you they need And then Mrs. Movie. Ferguson, and she's trying to set me up with her daughter or her granddaughter or their neighbor's granddaughter. And I'm like, well, I have a cookie. I can't hear you. <laughs> and the truth of the, the George Bailey of it all is my kids, I, I kept teasing that I was going to do, you know, Jimmy Stewart from, from It's a Wonderful Life. And they were mortified. They're like, no, you're not, Dad. And my manager in New York City was like, no, you're not, Chris. And my wife was like, are you seriously going to do that? And then when I met the director, he was like, <laughs> are you real? And I was like, no, I really, I kind of, yeah. And so he created a little device, this invisible knob. And when I did too much George Bailey, he would turn it down and we would push towards him or push towards. But, I, but ultimately, what I wanted was that enthusiasm and that sort of feeling of buoyancy from like, there was an unbridled joy from those movies, from those guys in the 1940s. It was, it was egoless, and it was kind of, and I wanted to try to do that because I think that's what ultimately, when we sit down and watch a Christmas movie, who cares about being cool or, you know, it's like all that stuff. You just want to feel, you want to feel good, and I think that that George Jimmy Stewart did that kind of the best ever. That, so for me to kind of nod in that special. direction is yeah. an honor. That's great. That's that was unreal. beautiful. Man, that was beautiful. you nailed it. Um, we got some What the Hallmark stuff. Yes. For you. Now, Chris, we do have this segment called What the Hallmark where we uh, ask you some questions and maybe you can give us some clarity about maybe what happened behind the scenes and the mind of the character Emmett that we could uh, maybe get some answers on. Um, I, I, okay. only have, I only have one. Now, um, and I think we have a picture for the people in the crowd. But there was a, there was a part of the, the movie where you, you tell, you, you tell uh, what's her name, uh, it, um, uh, Nell? Nell. That you, mm-hmm. that you Nell. made, a, that you made a, a welcome sign for her. And what the welcome <laughs> sign is, is a science fair board with some, <laughs> with some interesting, like, yeah, there it is. <laughs> Now, I want to know, how, how long did it take Emmett to make that science fair boy? Well, I think the truth of the matter is, is that he, he did you notice Emmett, you know, sort of, it's sadly like kind of shoving little Marnie off a lot. He's like, will you watch Marnie while I go to the radio station? And he, I think he gave her lots of tasks. I think he was like, we're going to make a sign here and some pencils and some paper. Go for it. Wow. That makes is, a lot. Is my, is, it, 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 and, and when I showed up, I kind of made a joke because I was like, this is the sign. This is the big <laughs> sign that we're going to – because, you know, it's set deck, and they, and they have their own ideas of how things roll out. Mm. Mm. It's a science fair board. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we welcome Nell. It's fantastic. Yeah. Welcome Nell. <laughs> and it's, have, uh, and even, even more to the point, it's in a corner of yeah. a bookstore. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. On the ground. That's when those boards are at their most useful. No, yeah. right there. Uh, I, I have a question for you, Chris. Listen – Let's talk about Brad for a minute, right? Be Brad, be Brad, my man. Uh, Here's the deal: What do you think happens to his career? Because the CEOs look at him and they're like, "Listen, we know you just torpedoed the big deal. We know that you've ruined Christmas for everyone, and we flew all the way out here and you didn't land the deal. But it was all about the Christmas spirit. What do you think happens to Brad afterwards? Like, do they get like come to their senses and fire him? What do you think? I think, sadly, uh, Brad got fired upon oh. return. I mean, literally, no. you see him at the table where he's like, can I get a ride back? And they were, like, <laughs> reluctantly, like, sure, Brad. Sure. <laughs> we lots to talk about. <laughs> Be red. Fired. Uh, hey, Chris, I got two for you. Um, yeah. So you have – Emmett has this great way of labeling the bookstore, and it's not normal at all, like – Fiction, nonfiction, young adult. It's all of these crazy, like, very specific things that there would never be enough books for. But the one at the front that you make uh, for Nell, or you said you made it for Nell, uh, is Heartfelt Christmas with Strong Female Heroine. 
uh, the the person, not the drug. And and and, and here's the de- that's a different section that's in a, the book. Yeah. <laughs> it's a different in section in the bookstore, not in the book. The book right. has no air. No, okay, yeah, good. I'm not on the same movie. Page. Now, yeah. um, you later you say uh, I'm going to move your book to the top shelf in the section. Uh, it's, it's selling like hotcakes. We're going to move it up to the top. What was in the top? Like, <laughs> what, what book was at the top of the hero, uh, heartfelt Christmas with strong female heroine section before Small Town Christmas got there? You know, Dan, I think you've got to take it back to the tape on this one. <laughs> because the tape don't lie. I think what was implied was he was going to move the whole section That's right. to the move front the of whole the section. store. Like, it was so he literally the took that little plaque and moved it to a new oh, bookshelf. Oh, I don't think so. There's still got to be other books there, right? It's not all. It's not like What About Bob, where it's like all baby steps. Like, there's still, <laughs> no, it literally, still... it literally was all her books. It's like, literally, I was sitting there. It, three shelves of only her books. Okay, all right, if you say so. Um, <laughs> what, 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 one of us was there, Chris. Uh, <laughs> all right, so the bookstore, the bookstore's name is Paige Turner's, right? And we Paige find Turner, out right. that that is your sister uh, who passed away. But you also say that the bookstore has been in the family for years. And yeah. so my question is, is that why was it named Paige Turner's? Uh, if the bookstore had been in the family for a long, long time, or was, or was there a backstory Maybe there was there? a name before Page. Maybe Page, Page is a, like a family name. I'd love to know a little bit about that, if you, if you could. Well, no, my, my impression of that, my understanding of that, when I had to utter those words, was that <laughs> Page is my family. She owned it for a long time, and it was, she named it after herself. I it got was a clever little so, way. Okay, her name so was Page. Page was... Last name is Turner. She's Page Turner, and so in that way... Her being my family, it was in the family. But I not guess, like a parent I, thing. Yeah, I guess technically for years means more than one. Yeah, right. Yeah, so that that's okay, valid. perfect. That was, I mean, but, but 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 you're right. We're skating on thin. We're, we're skating on thin ice there, even for a Hallmark <laughs> movie. Like it, technically, but yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah. And I ran it for six years, and so assumably she ran it for however many years prior to that. So. Sounds, like, sounds like years, years to, to me. me. Like That's years. right. Um, yeah. Why don't you get over yourself? Chris, yeah, we, read we, a book. Thanks, Chris, yeah. we are going to let you go, but before, like, we need to tell the people here about a journey real quick. In July, we did a, a very, our very first episode. A preview, preview episode, episode that I said would be my first yeah. and last one we ever yeah, did. We did Rocky Mountain Christmas. <laughs> yeah, you <and>, did. <laughs> and this, this guy right here, Chris Palaha, called uh, us up. On like, family we had, vacation. Yeah, five listens. He called us up on family vacation to talk to us about a movie that came out half a year ago and he's been with us ever since and I, I can't like Chris when I think about this like journey a, like a fungus that like, won't leave the seat <laughs> when, when I think about this journey the thing that I uh, uh, I don't know cherish the most yeah. is the fact that, that you mm. came out of this first well I, and, and just to be clear like I give these movies a hard time this is the best leading man of the Hallmark movies yes, it's is. not even close <laughs> hands down it's not even close oh, thank he, you guys. He, he carries the movie He's got smolder to burn this oh, guy. My goodness. Uh, dude, you're such a champion. Thanks so much, Chris. Mm. We can't thank you enough. We really can't. Thank you so much, man. Give Chris a round of applause. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Right. yeah. yeah. Well, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, you, uh, hold on a second. All that cut out. What did you say? Nothing. Ah. Ah. Yeah. He's good. Oh. We didn't even record I'm it, kidding. Chris. <laughs> um, well, it's, it's reciprocal and it's mutual. We, and we spoke earlier, and I, you know how much I appreciate you guys and how proud I am of you and what you've accomplished. And, and what you're doing, I think, is a lot of fun. It's community building, and your hearts are in the right place, and you bring a lot of people joy and laughter and I love, you can feel the love, even from Grumpy Dan. Uh, it comes through loud and clear, guys. So what you're doing is particularly, you know, just particularly today. Like, it, we, every generation needs, needs a laugh, and you guys are providing it. It's awesome. Thank I'm you, happy Thanks, to be man. Part of Chris Palaha, everybody. Right. Chris yeah, Palaha. Thank you. Merry, Christmas, Chris. Merry Christmas, Chris. Wow. And go see Chris Merry Palaha. Merry Christmas, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Merry and, Christmas. and go see Chris Palaha in the year 2020 in the next Wonder Woman yeah, movie. That's true. That's true. He's going to be this in the next guy. Wonder Woman movie. True story. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. We're on our way, kids. Yeah. All right, guys. Enjoy. Happy, happy Christmas, everybody. Love Thanks. you all. Merry Christmas, Chris. Woo. Thank you. We, and and right, that good. does it. Thanks we for did having it. me, guys. Yeah. Bye, buddy. So, I think yeah. you need to hang up. I Is think he, that's how that works. No, no, you hang up. No, you, no, no, you, you hang, hang up. up. You. Uh, we did it. We did it. Oh, man. Wow. Guys, our wow. first. Wow. 
First live show. Wow. Uh, thank you so much if you're listening. Thank you so much. This episode's coming out on Christmas Eve. Mm. Yeah. So Merry Christmas to those of you that are listening. Merry Christmas to those of you in the crowd. And from all of us, a, a, one, the a, a, yeah, a huge Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Taking a tour of where your finances can go? Good plan. See how Northwestern Mutual's approach to financial planning is designed for your goals with our interactive tour. Try it today at northwesternmutual.com slash tour. The Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin.